Good morning. Welcome to Waste Not Wednesday. We go live every Wednesday at 10 a.m. Mountain Time, and we take things that we got for free or junk that we find and turn it into home decor. And I'm super excited for today because <laughs> my friend Hillary from Just One L E L L E, if you want to look her up on Facebook, um, has done a lot of pinners conferences, and she had a bunch of these ceiling tiles left over from a class she taught like three years ago. She said they were too big that she didn't want to ship them. Um, and she gave me like 40 of them for free. We've got a ton. 40. Can you guys like even see the detail? It looks like I don't have the lights on in this here this morning because it's bright. Might have to turn them on so you can see. I really have all the, the awesomeness. Best friends. Well, I was going to show. Oh, there them. we go. You can see it. Do you want to pull down that gray ceiling tile up there? Yeah, that so, actually looks like the same ceiling tile. We have a ceiling tile up on our shelf that people always want to buy we used to carry them but the manufacturer no longer makes them and these are the identical tiles to the one that i have so i'm super excited to play with them oh, they're I think a little we... different but similar oh no yeah no the, that's the same the edge is different here that's similar it's almost identical let's just say that um and this is the one that i have that i've like kept forever so but we love the finish on this one we so we're gonna see if them. we can replicate it we've got four ceiling tiles to play with today i think i might sell some of them just as is most of them look like this because this is how she started for her class um but so we're super excited to get started they do have sharp edges they do have sharp edges <laughs> she's they're like actual i ceiling moved tiles. them around my garage a million times they kept cutting me and i'm giving them to you she dropped them off by my house which is even better because i never make it away these days um, and I'm going to be using, I want to use the new Whispering Willow IOD transfer. It came out with the last release. I, had, I hadn't used it. Um, yesterday I did a project with it, which the video for this will come up on Friday. But I used Whispering Willow. Do you guys remember? It looks a little bright. Zeb, can you turn it down? Or oh, actually, that, now they can see it. Yeah. Um, if I angle it. If you guys remember, this is that Hobby Lobby art from the Saturday Thrift Hall. I totally transformed it with paint and the transfer and um, some mold. So I'm debating whether to turn all the lights on and see if that changes things. That might help. But anyways, I'm going to be using this transfer. And I don't know what Zeb's going to do. I brought him some inlays. I'm doing the gray on there. You're going to do the gray? I'm going to try to get that faux gray finish with the wash. All right. I'm going to get started on mine. I want to do varying shades of pink. Well, now we get better shadowing. But it's bright. It's bright today. It's bright. <laughs> Summertime. All right, Sun's already brush. high in the sky. If you want to purchase the Whispering Willow Transfer or paint, these are really wet. I just plugged myself with paint. JamieRayVintage.com. And when we get these finished, we'll put them up for sale on the website as well. So I'm just going to do a base coat here with the gray skies. And because it seals itself, because it's an all in one paint, then we'll be good to go the once it dries out. Wet, so that might That's actually perfect because I want it to be a little thinner. Okay, I'm going to put this I don't in. care if some of this white peeks through. So I'm using vintage pink, or should I use, I think I'm going to use the vintage pink, and then I'm going to use first crush over the top for different shades. You guys, the power of this Klingon brush, it's like one dip about three quarters of the bristle, and this gray skies is pretty much giving me full coverage, even with a damp brush, because she just washed it, with one dip. Look at well, that. Well, I can't guarantee you that song. those results help it happen every time. The Tootsie Roll song. No, you when can't I sing dip, it. you dip, Don't we sing dip. it. <laughs> every time. Every time. When you say dip, I got to sing that song. If you're not a child of the 90s, you might not know the reference. So it's getting a little thin in the center. I'm going to probably have to come back over with some more paint, but only one. Mine's a little thick because guess what? Uh, we left the paint off this, the, the lid off this. But that's all right. So I'm if gonna, you want to do milk paint and you want a base layer, this um, Cottage Colors is perfect because of the built-in sealer. It kind of gives you a barrier between the milk paint and the paint. So on this, I'm just, I just kind of slapped the paint on there. Now I'm just smoothing out some brush strokes. It Let's, should level, but I'm going to hit it with a heat gun so I can move on to the next step because we've got a bunch of these we can do if I get done early, which is not likely, but... <laughs> I'm going to heat gun it and that might dry it a little quicker than, than it would normally be able to level. We had, I want to talk about this for a sec. We had someone 
message us the other day. They were having trouble. They were getting streakies in their finish. Um, and what I think was happening is the paint was drying too fast. It was probably a warm day or, um, you fan know, blowing fan, on it. fan on it, something. So what I recommended to her was, you know, just get your brush a little wet, dip it in water, then dip it in paint and then paint it. And then that should help it self level because if it dries too fast, it's you're going to get brush strokes and see different variations in the sheen because it's like a satin finish because it dries too quickly and it can't level down. And you can also out. add water to like your finish and yeah. that will take longer to dry, not just your paint, but you like your ceiling finish. Yep. Um, you can do the same thing when you're spraying. If you are spraying or painting outside, just be careful because yeah, if it dries too quickly, it will be streaky. Do you have the heat gun over there? Um, yeah, I do. We have two heat guns. Can you even see the colors? It's let me tone it back. Let me is, see if I can tone this camera back a little the bit. The pink is pretty light. It's like, I'm going to give you all the brightness today. And I just, I love varying shades of pink. So I also love oh, to do like, there we go. That's, that's pink. better. And they will dry darker. That's, that's like the joy of it. It's like the opposite of DIY paint. Okay. I think I got all the last little, I had like just a teeny tiny bit of vintage pink in here. It's, is it me or is it so satisfying to finish the end of a paint can? Well, you missed some on the side. Are you done? No, I have more pink. Okay. That's just gone. There's nothing else left in there. You couldn't get any more drops there out. There was no vintage pink left. Somebody was saying yesterday, this said, I just shouldn't make a shirt that says, my friends bring me junk. Because it's true. I can use it. You do need to stir this paint if it's been sitting a little bit because of the built-in top coat. It will separate. So I got, now that I'm drying it, I got a little thin spot over here. But most of the brush strokes are going away. I don't actually care about brush strokes. I, I encourage them. Be careful. You got some pink over here on me. Oh, now it's awesome. You don't want pink on your gray skies? No. <laughs> if you are within like paint brush distance, I am you could close. get splatter. Every time I paint, if Dion is near me, I wind up getting paint on her, her clothes, her dress. It's kind of a running joke that we have going. I am better though. When I first started painting, I could never paint on camera without getting paint all over me. And I've painted enough on camera in nice clothes or in public in nice clothes that I am better. Um, I should not have done that. That was already starting to dry. No, oh, did you get? It's just kind of like chunky now. And it's did it pull right. a little bit? Got texture. Once your paint starts to dry, it'll mess with it. So I'm gonna need to go. I think that you need to so do this white is... swan. Yeah. Do we have any? I thought I grabbed it for you. Did you grab someone when you were at the shop the other um, day? Um, I did grab some. Hold on, my nose is itching. We've I'm been outside. I'm just looking at the, the original up there. I'll show you guys in a sec. Again, if you missed it, if you're just joining, we have a ceiling tin that looks really similar to this. Where's the matching? Oh, you pulled it up already. See if yeah. I can pull it down without knocking everything over. If you're just, just tuning in, Zeb is trying to create this look that was manufactured. We used to sell these, and I am actually just going to do varying shades of pink, and I'm going to put a transfer on mine. And we have four tins that I brought in from outside total, so if we get these done, we'll do more. See if there's any questions. <laughs> looks like um everybody's doesn't have questions right now but you do who watched yesterday's guys. video have you guys seen the uh the obelisk do you say obelisk or obelisk i like to put the e in there i i can guarantee you however i say it somebody's gonna correct me <laughs> so i i don't even that's because you make up interesting words Shanta um, says, oh, my word, ceiling tins, how lovely. And on the paint, hold on, now it's, it says, I always say, if I didn't get it all over me, did I really paint? Yeah. And I love this new paint with a built-in top coat. But once it gets on your skin, because it has a top coat, it doesn't wash off that You, you usually wake up next morning, you got some paint on you somewhere. Yeah. Hey, where are you going? I'm taking your heat gun that you borrowed from me. So I got a heat gun mine. I can get my milk paint on there. All right. It's a trellis. I can say trellis, Ruru. 
Are these, are we, are we shipping? Yeah, we could ship these. My, my friend was like, yeah, these are too big to ship, but they're not bad. The way we'll ship them is we'll just put a big piece of cardboard on top and bottom. And then like, we'll, we'll bubble wrap cardboard, cardboard, and then flat ship them with cardboard, cardboard again, and they'll be fine. You just have to keep them from bending. Lots of cardboard does that. I think I'm probably going to sell them for like $49.95 to $59.95, but I'll just do free shipping. So that way the website doesn't charge too much shipping. For that, we should be able to ship them. I don't know. We'll see. I sometimes do that, and then we get the shipping bill, and they're like, why did you make them free shipping? I don't know. Uh oh The cost of freight these days. Roshana says, love honeysuckle, brings back childhood memories. So honeysuckle does not grow, at least anywhere I've seen, naturally here in Utah. So some people were asking, what kind of variety is it? I have no the idea. Lowe's variety? Yeah, it came from Lowe's. It's probably not wild or invasive. So I wanted a hydrangea, but it where it's put, there's full sun. Oh, man, all day long it gets beat down <laughs> by like, like 100 degree That's sun. never going to survive there. And he's right. So uh, we went with the honeysuckle. I'm going to wash my brush real quick. What would be the price for tins with no finish? I don't really know, Callie. I really need to figure out how much they're going to cost to ship to make sure I'm charging correctly for them. So we'll let you know. when They'll get put up on the website probably by the end of the week. So next week, Zeb and I are going to be on Trek with Church, which is like a pioneer trek where you push hand cars. And so we won't be live, but we will have a Waste Not Wednesday. We have some product that I've literally been waiting for for like four months that got broken in transit and they did not wait till they were all the way dry to ship. So there were some imperfections and the manufacturer is going to have to reship to me. And they're like, do whatever you want with them, throw them away, whatever. I'm like, listen, I waited four months for these. I'm not throwing them away. So Zeb and I are going to make them over and we'll pre-record that. So that'll be next week. You don't want to miss out on that. And we're going to be gone Monday through Thursday. So Monday's video, we're going to um, show you guys the craft kit that's coming up and how we're going to finish that. So that'll be fun. And then Wednesday, we'll have the pre-recorded Waste Not Wednesday. And Caitlin will be on. It'll be a premiere. So that way you guys can chat like normal. And Caitlin will be on to answer questions. So it'll be fun. All right. What I'm doing over here, I've got DIY paint in white swan, full strength on the brush. I just dipped it about an inch in, and then I've got about an inch of water in this cup. I'm just going to dip my brush down in there and, uh, you know, use it to kind of mix that up. Not all the way off of my brush. I don't want it all the way saturated because I think it'll just run too much. I might have to do this a couple times, um, and we'll see if we can get kind of some good streaky runs make it look like it's been out in the weather for a while sorry if you guys heard our freeze dryer is running and i was just in our pantry so if you heard like a buzzing sound that's what that was zeb had the boys cut up a bunch of bananas Summer, summertime boredom has set in so they're getting chores today they came and helped us at the church water and take care of the garden so i think i'm just going to do the whole brush because you can see how that kind of faded up top there instead of all the runs. I don't know that the, the runs are what we want. So I'm just gonna brush it, make sure it has enough to kind of run down. I'm just making milk paint over here. So I've got my milk paint powder in here and it's one part milk paint to one part warm water. I like to do a little less, because then it goes on a little so bit. So I have not there. dipped in the white swan again. This is still that same first dip with the water. And yes, I'm just using a regular fork. I'm going to put this straight in water and uh, it'll be fine. Well, the milk paint's food safe. It'll be all right. Yeah. And all of our silverware comes from the thrift store. It's like 25 <laughs> cents a piece. So except for the Lennox that's like 20 years old, it uh, none of it's too precious. So I'm holding it up like this so that it does run down as it, so it doesn't pull up. It kind of gives me a little run effect. 
just started at the top so gravity could work its way down. Okay, I'm gonna leave that upright for a second. Deb's hoping to finish spraying today. And then we're gonna work on caulking and trim and all the brush painting. And while he's doing that, I will get started sanding floors and then onto electrical work and trim on. We can't put our, our baseboards will go on last because the the electrical goes under the baseboards. That's how you got to do it when you have old buildings. Old adobe walls. And I asked about that because I was worried. I'm like, is that is that code? Yeah. I brought in a licensed electrician. He's like, oh, yeah, that's how we retrofit all these old houses. It just goes under the baseboards. <laughs> well, GFI situation going on there. If you don't know about uh, electrical, none of that will make sense. But um, let's see. The painted huckleberry says, I love those oak lists you made. I've wanted them for a while and we're gonna have to make some smaller versions for our blackberries. So we, we might have another Oblisk video and maybe we'll go in more detail. People kept asking about the angle. Did you even- The angle, or? literally, I just get, I just lined them up and guessed. Like, so it's a pretty steep angle. I would say like uh, 25 degrees okay. if I'm guessing right. But yeah, just, I, I literally just angled them down on the ground. And then I was like, okay, I can see where this board needs to meet up. And I sliced that end and then I sliced the other and I made sure that they weren't wider than I wanted them to be about 36 inches across on the bottom. My and paint's a little thick. That's how so I did it. I'm going to throw this outside because I don't want so, to So to be honest, I actually don't know. <laughs> Whoops. I don't know the angle, Odilia I guess. Had a, uh, Eliza had a panhandle hanging out under here. And I stepped on it. Um, but I, I honestly don't know what the angle is on those. Okay, I think this is dry enough. It's not going to run. I've got like some brighter spots bubbling. I might. Oh, that looks good. I, I might think you need do. More. Do you want to heat gun it and add more? Yeah, I might do add two coats wax. like that because see how this sits a little more down in? You can see the original that we're trying to replicate and then mine. And this is actually a faux finish too that was just really well done. I think what you need also is dark wax or black wax. I'm going to need more paint is what I'm going to need. More yeah, white. lots more white paint and then coming with black wax. I think you will have nailed it. All right. What color should I paint this one? Um, well, what are you doing with the pink one? It's drying. That one, the pink one's going to get the new Whispering Willow transfer. Should I put them? I was thinking about doing a mold on this one. Yeah, I think if you did like a cool mold. Also, we might do some stenciling in the middle. We've got some stencils out. We've got some some IOD inlays. We've also got some transfers that we might do. That's what's so. going on the pink one. That, oh, that's on. This that's is what we do one. here. We play on Wednesday. Yeah, this is Experiment it's, Wednesday. We should experiment rename it. Experiment Wednesday. It's the only time we get to do it because we're so busy. All right, so another single dip with the brush about an inch in. Full strength white swan. I'm not going to add more water. I want, I want this to be a little darker on this. Is it make some obelisk to sell? I'm sure we will. As soon as we get the church like finished and we start building displays, Zeb's going to start making some stuff that's one of a kind that we can sell at the shop. But we've really got to get moved in. But we're going to move in and open before the grand opening. So that'll give us time to complete some other projects. Well, here's the thing. I was thinking about it. I haven't built a table since our last grand opening has been almost three years and that's kind of what i do for my fun creative outlet I, I enjoy all these little smalls but i really love the wood turning the creating corbels but i don't love doing 800 of them so i'm gonna start i think what we'll start doing is i'm gonna probably do like four or five of a design and then i'll move on and do a different design and there'll be kind of limited runs of stuff Somebody was talking about that yellow Pyrex bowl we used to mix stuff in. In my defense, if you've ever watched a video and we've used Pyrex to mix paint in or whatever, it's always dishwasher dried. So it's not really valuable, at least not here. Nobody bowl, wants. Did you have a yellow bowl right now or was that in a video? That was in a video. Oh. <laughs> dishwasher dried means somebody put it in the dishwasher and it's all like faded in real life and people don't really buy those. And actually Pyrex is losing its popularity here. Like I might sell a bowl unless it's like a really like a buttish, buttish, butter Amish print in like a turquoise. They're not really as valuable here. So I don't know if you can see that. I have some pooling down on the drop cloth because I had so much on there. And this one is showing the streaky a little better. 
And I am using roses, the IOD mold of roses. So I want to do some flowers. I don't even know. Okay. It's hard to see on camera. Okay. There you can see it a little bit. I, I set it down flat because I didn't want that to keep running off. I want some of this to stay pooled in the detail. So on this one, I set it down flat. And you, Jamie's over here doing molds. Uh, Rita wants to know about the sprayer we use. Rita, the sprayer for the wall or the sprayer for furniture? So the sprayer for furniture is from Harbor Freight. It's an HVLP and we use the purple one. They have a few different ones. And then um, the sprayer we've been using for walls is an airless. And you have to use that with like a five gallon bucket. So I wouldn't suggest it for furniture because you'd waste a lot of paint. Yeah, the um, hose itself would take, would probably fill up this whole quart of paint just to fill up the hose. <laughs> yeah, um, and it's a Graco. It's like the $200 one from Home Depot. Yeah, it was, no, it, it was, was I had a $200 gift certificate that they gave me when we bought the church <laughs> for oh, Home Depot. But that's so. how much it cost, two or 300, yeah? It was almost $400. Oh, okay, well, it was the bottom of the line. Um, it's a third horsepower Graco. I don't know the model on it. They've got like 300 models, um, but yeah, it's kind of middle of the road. They've got them that run up to like two thousand dollars. So if you if you find one that's like three fifty ish, because it was almost four hundred with tax, that's what it's going to do. And then I got two extensions, two forty inch extensions, and screwed them together. So I have eighty inches of extension out there to get those high spots and the ceilings and the rafters and all that. All right, I'm just doing some roses and some leaves. I'll have Zeb close up here. I have dusted all my. But it was well worth it. I did. I was hesitating to buy it because we used a Harbor Freight one here, sprayer for the house. And when we were finishing up, it kind of got just put in the garage because we were hustling so that the appraiser could come. And we literally were painting up to the last minute before the appraiser came. And it got forgotten in the garage for like a month. And it was it was solid all through the whole hose line and everything. Like I could probably spend an entire day cleaning this out and it still might not work right. So we just went and got a new one and it's that, that Graco has been well worth it. It's, it's a nice, it's a nice airless sprayer. Kate, um, the and winner for the paint from the 200th uh, thrift hall, it will be announced next Saturday Yeah. at the next thrift hall. So if you don't know what we're talking about, find our thrift hall video from this last Saturday that says 200 thrift hall. We're doing a giveaway where two people can win every single one of the new cottage colors. Um, and all you have to do is comment with our favorite, your favorite thrifted item in one of our 200 <laughs> thrift hauls. I'm loving lot. all the comments. You guys are remembering some lot. stuff that I'm like, oh yeah, I didn't even remember we thrifted that. Cause we, I mean, Jamie and I on our end, we're thrifting every week and we find hundreds of things in the course of a month. <laughs> I might not have dusted this that well because they're not coming out super easy. Or maybe I didn't dust it at all. Yeah, we just, we're doing the giveaway because we wanted to say thanks for hanging with us for 200 thrift haul live streams. That's a lot of thrift hauls. <laughs> all right, I'm just using the leaves anyways, so. I'm liking the second wash on this a lot. I'll lift it up so you guys can see the detail on it good and adjust the lighting or the camera, whatever we got to do. But this wash on this one did really well. I'm just trying to figure out how I want to do well, this. That's on the floor. <laughs> I think I'm going to do it like that. What do you think, Zeb? Good thing it's a wash. Hold on, my, my heat gun cord just knocked over my wash. All right, I'm going to uh, zoom in to what my, I'm doing here. And it's all better. Okay. Because it was really watered down. All right, focus up here. All right. <laughs> All right, so I've just got a little pile. I'll flip this around so it's the correct direction for you. This is my, what I've been working on while Zeb's doing the wash over there. Are you, is, did you already glue those on? No, I'm just figuring layout. So now that I've figured out layout, I know, okay, these have to be on the bottom and then these go on the top. It's kind of how I do it. Can you pass me that glue? Yep. We're out of Gorilla Glue construction adhesive, so I've been just using wood glue, which works. Well, we're not. We're out because it, it fell and, and it the, tip the tip broke off. 
and it got all weirdly dried yeah, out. So it, it was it was mostly used up. It's all right. I, this is just a condiment uh, squirter from the grocery store and wood glue. We buy wood glue by the gallon. I know you're shocked. So we have to find something to distribute it in. Yeah, I think these roses are going to look good. Well, they're I hard used, to see on that white, but once you paint it all, it'll really show up. I used a bunch of molds yesterday. I used um, the sheep mold from the farmer's market one, and I put it on, remember on Saturday, that ugly uh, wall pocket that had stuff hot glued to it? That I worked on that yesterday and turned it into a cute little sheep wall pocket. And I use the lamb mold. Okay, so I'm going to layer that one on there. To see if there's any questions. Oh, Jane says she remembers being so excited when we started shipping our finds and we put them on the website. Jane has purchased a number of fun items from us over the years. She's got probably half our collection of French canning jars. <laughs> Plus a number of other things. <laughs> okay. All right, I've got, you want to, if you're layering, you want to make sure you've got lots of glue so that way everything sticks well, but this is still soft, the clay is. So I am trying to be delicate and then I'm just going to take, where's my little paintbrush? My know. artist brush. You... Oh, I'm going to take my artist brush after I push this down, just kind of pull back some of the paint, and then I'm going to put it straight in water so that way the paint doesn't mess up my brush. You don't have to. You can the just paint, paint over the glue, but... So the glue doesn't mess up your brush? What? You said so the paint doesn't mess up Oh, so brush. the glue doesn't mess up your brush. <laughs> yes, so I'm just pulling this out. There's, and I'm going to go throw this in the sun to get a little crust on my mold before I paint it. All right. Let me show you guys this, what we're working with now. So that's what two washes has done. And I am loving that. It's sticking down in all the details. Now, instead of just a straight white on here, you can really start to see all of the contours and the nooks and crannies and the detail that this has. There's a lot going on on this tin. So next step, I feel like I want to do, I don't want to do a black wash, but you can see how this kind of has like some darker gray over the top of the white. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe I'll do that and then I'll do one more white and then I'll have this pretty much looking like it's sat outside for a hot minute. So I don't know if this pink is going to be a different enough tone, but I think it is for going to be for a tone on tone look. We'll see. Do we have we'll see. best petticoat pink, white linen? All right. So now I'm brushing on first crush and milk paint. Oh yeah. Definitely a different shade than the vintage pink. I'll have Zeb. Let me just zoom in so you guys can see the difference. Oops. You, hey, you got the there? You can't just bend it down. You got to loosen it up or you're going to break it. <laughs> well, I didn't push too hard. Oh, yeah, you guys can see that. So we've got a few different shades of pink going on here. And then I'll heat gun it and hopefully we'll get some chipping. If we don't, then I guess I'll just wet distress it. I, the other day, somebody's like, everything you do is pink or blue or green. I was like, sometimes I do pink. So today... We're busting out the pink. Oh, Zeb, that looks good. I mean, I'm not shocked because you're good at what you do, but I'm getting I do there. like that. We're getting there. All right, so I've got another dip of white swan in my cup here. I'll pull you back. So you I'm going to need see. you to replicate that like 10 times for the website. Oh, really? Okay. <laughs> in all your spare time. Maybe when you're waiting for videos to upload, you can lay it all out. All right. Maybe. Okay. What about copper, Zeb? You could do copper on I it. Could, I, wouldn't mix I it might with do this. copper on another one. I'm going to leave this one gray, but I like where you're at, and I might try that on the next one I do. I might leave it white 
and do that. Okay, so made another wash. Put more water back in here because I spilled it. And then now I'm just going to take a little, I've got a little black dress here, also in DIY paint. I just got a little dip of it there because I want to tint this wash and make it more gray. Did I get it Do we paint? have any layered chocolate? I feel like I need to add some yeah. brown to this to give it kind of, because this looks just like I basically created a lighter version of the gray skies. Let you me go see. We have black in it. We have a little black dress. Well, I've just put some black in it. Oh, I don't know. I'm I gonna... might have layered chocolate. You could add some dark and decrepit. That's brown. We do have dark and decrepit right here. All right. So now I've got this other color pink on here. Can I use a heat gun? Yeah. Oh, are you going to chip that milk paint up with the heat gun? Well, we're going to see. This is not the first time I've used the cottage color with milk paint over the top. It's just the first time I've done it on camera. I have a little nightstand that I did this to. I know we're doing a lot of things here, guys. Do we Jamie's, ever not Jamie's do doing her thing. I'm doing my thing. Let me show you the gray on this wash. Is that even, can you even see that? So it's pretty, it's a pretty light gray. I added just a little bit of black. Now I've got dark and decrepit liquid Dutina, and it's going to get me that brown tone, just probably a teaspoon worth in there. I'm going to mix that up. It's all water-based, so it plays well together until it cures. This dark and decrepit does have a built-in top coat. It's basically like a tinted top coat. Okay, I want it to be, I got a little darker, a little more brownish. Leslie said that I have single-handedly changed her opinion of pink. Pink is good. I always do like a, like I like dirty pink. So I, not always, but most of the time I will do like a black or dark wax over it to age it. And I like it. All right. That's more what I was wanting. This is like a, like a browner gray wash, like more, more brown tones in it. Um, I'm going to wash that over so that it contrasts a little bit with what we had going on with the gray skies on this tin and see what we get. I'm probably up to a tablespoon of dark and decrepit now. We carry some smaller tin tiles that are like the size of the inside of this square. And we usually keep those in stock most of the time. Sally said dirty pink, LOL. Have I never said that before, dirty pink? It's really good, it's good stuff. With like the dark wax? Dark or black, either or. You've got paint on my- Oh, whoops, payback. It's fine, payback's a bummer. It's fine because I'm gonna wet distress. Pink so is a Barbie color. This is getting rid of some of my white. Maybe, maybe, hold on. Do we have a, do we have a spritzer or sprayer that doesn't have sealer in it? No. You could just use a, use a brush and just drift water over the top with a clean brush. There should be one. Did you, yeah, there should be a clean brush in the door, sweetie. Hold on, I'm looking over here. Paint fight, there's, <laughs> that that does happen. A little paint here and there. Usually I'm the messy one though, so it's surprising that Zeb's getting paint all over me. You guys can't see this, but this is crackling. I will show it to you. It probably won't really show up much until I put the wax on it. I like the pink because it's different. Pink is actually like on things like this, if I can get them right and get it chippy, they sell very, very fast. I once had a piece of chippy, chippy pink salvage that was tiny and I sold it for like $25 because people just love it. Oh, I'm losing my white. I might have to wash over that again. Well, faux finishes have lots of layers. And you never know exactly what's going to happen, so you have to be willing to do a step over and over again until you get it just right. So I just had water on this brush. No, no paint or dark and decrepit or anything. All right. So Actually, it's starting not to get a little this. chippy. I need a wet washcloth. You are 
really getting that everywhere. I'm, I'm, not I'm having to, to hurry before my wash does stuff hot. I don't want it to do. Okay, I'm actually pretty happy with that. It didn't get rid of all of the white. But that's good. I think once you dry that, it'll be really good. I'm just getting a rag wet so I can wet distress. So some people watching this may ask, why on earth are you making that look like it's got runs and drips on it? Because that's what it looks like when it's been outside or on an actual uh, building. Because nobody told us no. That's yeah. Why. And when you bring the age and the weather inside, it's just, I feel like it adds a lot of texture, a lot of warmth. It's, it's just fun. Mine's starting to pull down so I can show you what it looks like. Let me get rid of some of these gray, drippy situations. No, they're adding to they're it. They're adding to it. Yeah, we should probably just put some on there. So you guys don't have to necessarily do this to a ceiling tin. You could do this to a dresser or like an old built-in. Someone was asking on the Jamie Ray Vintage group what they should do to an old built-in. I think this kind of finish would make it look like it'd been chilling in the barn and maybe got some weather on it. You guys and see. it would be great. Can you guys see the lighter color coming through? I think you can. I got to use that heat gun when Zeb's done. There's another one in there. You can go grab it. I know, but I grabbed that one. I'm currently stole. I so out of principle, you have to get the other heat gun. All right. I see. That's good. I'll go get it. Because <laughs> I don't want this to dry all the way or else I won't chip the way I want. Man, my nose is running. Too much time in the garden. Too much you garden to time. Too many weeds. Though. It's probably those thistles that are starting to blossom right there along the fence line on the other side of the fence. I contemplated, because our neighbors, we our neighbors have like the back half of their yard is is more like a field and it's it's basically weeds that have gone to seed and they're like yeah you can mow it if you want or do whatever but they've got some thistles growing along the fence line that are taller than the fence now and they're they're coming up with all their uh, purple blossoms and they kind of look cool all right i just got to get it wet because what happens is when the paint is wet and then you heat gun it, it will crackle and chip because you are quickly reducing the moisture faster than if it were to air dry. And that's why you get that reaction, scientifically speaking. And it will crack and chip a little on its own, but I like to influence it. All right, lots of heat gunning happening, but that's so we can get our layers on. Jane said she could see the different colors. Awesome. I got to get this all the way dry and cool before I even consider putting a transfer. There on. we go. Now you can see it good. And she's going to get more cracking because she basically reactivate she dried the paint out got crackle reactivated it wiped it drying it again getting more crackle it's wet enough she's actually pushing water over there with the heat gun and then here's mine i actually feel like you know short of a couple color variations oh, i really awesome. nailed the uh it the looks finish. Like i'm gonna hold them together are you gonna do any dark wax or i'm gonna leave it? it i think, I think i'm that's done good. I think I'm done. You you nailed that. Hashtag nailed it. So now you can really see the vintage pink underneath with some white peeking through where it's been distressed. No, it, that's just the vintage pink. Oh, that's just vintage, vintage pink. Vintage pink and first crush. You can see that how much darker first crush is versus vintage pink. And to me, I always thought first crush was a super light pink, but Definitely, it's not as light as... Well, our new pink. line with the cottage colors, a lot of it almost looks white on camera because it's such a light pastel. But in real life, it's not. But no, they, yeah, they definitely, That's you can see there. them. 
It's a great way to achieve an old chippy look without the worry of uh, lead paint. Okay. Here we have my inspiration, what I was trying to duplicate. And then here's the one I did. I like it. Yours is just lighter. But, yeah, it's. I don't have the uh, dark as dark. I might come back good. with that wash and just hit. Some spots. Uh, I don't know. I'm don't looking know, at like this it. one. I can just leave it. I think it's good. All right. And then I'm going to show you guys mine up close. This is where we're at. Oops, it's blurry. There we go. I'm going to let this dry all the way. This, Peppy says, I like the um, Zeb piece. I'm going to let this dry all the way and cool down before I put a transfer on it. I'm going to go grab my ceiling tin that's been outside. Here, let me show you real quick while she's doing that. If you're wondering how on earth would you use this in a decor situation. <laughs> so you can see up there, we've got it. Towels on the banister. Watch out for that. Kids are using the pool like crazy this summer. Um, so you can see kind of Jamie's vignette up here on her shelves. We use a lot of the items, so it changes daily pulling stuff down bowls and cups and the little creamers are pretty functional. Um, but it's just a nice backdrop to what she's got going on with the, uh, oh, right there. So that's, that's what we do with them. You can do other things. You can, you can make the whole thing be just like a piece of art. It looks cute sometimes to hang a wreath in front of them. I had more glue pooch out. So I'm going to get my artist brush and clean that up. Seb, what color should I paint this? Oh, hmm. So we hmm. have Monet's garden. And I kind of thought that might be like a deeper like a green. Ba good base. You coat. know, if you did that and then did the whitewash over it, that could look pretty good. Because that toned that green back. Let me go get some. For it's you. in the squeezy bottle. Oh, is it? Yeah. So I put it outside just. What happens is you get a little bit of a crust and you can do the same thing with a heat gun um, on your molds and then it makes them so when you paint them, it doesn't like get rid of the definition. This is also DIY, the clay-based paint. Monet's garden. I'm going to put this up. I need to do another one. Can you guys see the flowers on there? All right. Now, the, this has been sitting in here for a long time, so I'm not about to just pretend like there's not a giant paint booger right there. Okay. We're good. Do I have a clean paintbrush? Well, these had like a wood backer on some of these. Must have been part of the class. Yeah, she put like an MDF backer. She's like, you can put MDF on the back. I'm like, I don't really feel like that's necessary. I'm going to take that off. <laughs> oh, it's got a big daub in the middle. Of like some can I use this one? What's on this one? Construction adhesive. Got it. <laughs> So when you're painting over your molds, guys, be super careful because they are still very much soft and you don't want to lose all the detail. I just kind of gently assemble the paint over the top. All right. Another tile here. Oh, wow. That's, what? That is very vibrant next to the white. <laughs> it's like a, it's a base. I think layer. a wash for sure on that. Base, like base wife. See, I called it base wife instead of bass wife because I'm I'm trying really hard to say things correctly. There, right. This paint had some water on it. This brush had water on it. So now I wanted to do someone suggested the copper, and I think that would be fun. We might not even get to doing inlays or anything. Julie, if you want to send a photo to us, just um just send us a message on Facebook. We don't always see those right away, but we will eventually, or Caitlin will see them and we will get, we can respond to you if you have questions. So I still have some gray wash that I made on this brush and I'm just dipping it in the white swan. And so what are you doing with that one? Um, I'm going to do, gonna do some gold and I might do an inlay in this or a copper and I might do some in, an inlay okay. in the center. If you're just tuning in, these are not actually old. My friend bought them for a class she was teaching and didn't use them for like three years. And so she dropped them off on my front porch a couple days ago. And I was like, yes, I will take those ceiling tins. Yeah, the tins are actually they look pretty much brand new on the back. You could probably sand them and hit them with some vinegar if you wanted them to be rusty. Some toilet bowl cleaner. 
I think she said she bought them like uh, like hundreds at a time um, and they were not painted or anything and they're raw silver form and she paid like nine dollars but that was pre-covid you couldn't touch these unfinished for probably less than 25 bucks right now if you could even find if you them. could even find them. Yeah. like everything's backed up on manufacturing so i was super grateful for them especially um specialty type things because most manufacturers have gone to making just what they are can't keep in stock like the real popular stuff I think I got this pretty well. I've got to try to make sure there's not like paint sitting down in the like details because then it takes forever to dry. I might hit the middle with a heat gun and then I'll put it outside and then I can work on my pink tile. We do this a lot when we're crafting or getting things ready for the shop. We do multiple projects that way something is drying while something else is being worked on so if you're a reseller kind of set up things to do while things are drying and you'll you'll make better use of your time boy when you paint them white that really just all the detail goes away there we go so you can kind of see the grayish on there that I did. It's more of just like a really light, light, light gray because I just dipped the white swan right, with so my brush that had gray open on that it. that front door for me? This is going to go outside to dry. It will dry oh, yeah. lighter. We'll be off camera but... for a sec. Just open no, it. Nobody, front door. I'll wait till. Rex, watch your head. Watch your head. He's been there the whole time. My there dog's go, like hanging out the door. Good job. Yeah, you okay. Good job not running outside. Not stay. You boys are so good. Okay. Now I need to dry mine. So that I can start putting some copper on this. One of the neighbor kids came over the other day and I had something sitting and I, they went to grab it to bring it inside. I'm like, no, it's drying. The neighbors <laughs> will soon learn. Do not touch stuff that's sitting on the, we have like a front walkway and that's where I, that's where I set everything to dry. Oh, I forgot to turn the brightness back up. I All guess right. it's not too dim. So just know if you do put transfers over a irregular chippy surface, they can um, chip well, you off. you got some good crackle up here. But I think this is pretty good. I'm just making sure there's not any loose pieces. Oh, there was green. On <laughs> your paper towel? Don't you got mind. some over here too. Don't mind me. All the DNA will be gone by the time somebody buys it. Okay. Now, Zeb, we have to decide which one I'm going to put on here. But don't heat gun my transfer. I'm not. Okay. So this is too pink. I think we need more contrast. Yeah. There's a deer. I actually think that deer is pretty fun. What if you do the deer with these darker pink flowers there? Um. All right. But there's other options. we got to make sure we There's more options. There. Why is there... Monet's garden all over my dang transfer. Because it's oh. on your hands. No, it's because it's on the... Oh, it's on the table. Oh, my. You got oh it my. all over there. Oh, my. You better get another uh, paper towel. It's very pigmented. Yeah. It's... Oh, it's everywhere. Good, we're good. More distressing. It's fine. All right, stop setting, all stop over, setting things on there. <laughs> it's because it's all over my drop cloth. So the back of this will have some green on it, too. I need to, like, dry the paint on the back of here on my drop cloth. You still got some Why green. Why I don't on. use dark colors? You still got some green on there. You need to, like, get a new paper towel. No, that's fine. I'm going to dark it. Holy moly. All right. Sorry guys, I gotta look at this over here because I now have paint everywhere. There is a bunny rabbit, Zeb, that's pretty cute. A hedgehog. All right, I think I wanna go with bunny. Zeb, so the question is, do you like this bunny? I kinda like that one. 
Um, well, why don't you show them? <laughs> well, I just want to get green paint. I think I'm going to go with this bunny. All right. Do we have scissors? Yep. They're right there. there we go. I'm just going to set this down here. I normally set it here, but I'm worried I'm going to get green paint everywhere. So. Okay. I got a few brush strokes on this and I'm not going with a full coverage. So I'm going to wash them away. And this is just water. I haven't washed the brush still. So whatever's on here, white swan. I like these. That's, that's like my, uh, my secret weapon to getting really grungy faux looks is don't wash your brush. <laughs> <laughs> also look at the time you save. All right, so we've got these green I can put in there. And I like this purple flower here. I have to talk while I do it. Like, I don't know that I can work without talking. Okay, I think I'm gonna start with this and then I might put some stuff in the corners. Bunny and leaves on first page. Painting on an oval frame with vintage pink. Any tips for no brush strokes? Spray it. <laughs> or um, you can use a foam brush. Just know that like, if it's really detailed, your first few coats might be a little streaky and brush strokey. Let it dry very good in between each coat. Let it dry in natural time. Don't heat gun it. And by the time you get three or four coats on, it should be smooth and not super brush strokey because it is self-leveling. If you do it somewhere where it's hot and it dries too fast or you heat gun it, you're gonna get more brush strokes. Um, and like I said, you could use a foam brush that helps, but if you've got a lot of detail, a foam brush probably isn't gonna work. Odelia's on here, she must be done with chair. Do we have the rubby stick? Yeah, that's who uh, Cody was barking at. Where's the stick? The applicator stick? Yeah. Did I not bring it? You got it? me. I haven't used one of the sticks in a while, so. That's okay. I got plenty of extra ones. They last forever, so. Whenever I clean out my craft cabinet, I find no less than like 20 sticks. Oh, this is still I don't wet have very here. long to finish this. We're almost out of time here. Yeah. This is still wet. I'm not about to try to put a transfer on wet paint. I don't have that kind of patience. Now I'm going to have to wait for it to cool down, but it's fine. We might go 10 or 15 minutes over, but I'm going to finish this. <laughs> oh, I don't want to do that. Make sure your paint's all the way dry. If you're using a paint that's really porous or you've distressed, you need to seal your paint first or just make sure there's no uh, powder from distressing. Otherwise your um, transfer will not stick. And if you do it over a surface that has like detail, it will crack a little bit your transfer, which you'll see here in a minute. Cause I went up and over the detailed side. So like right here, there's a little crack. It's just because it went up and over. Okay, we'll see where the bunny's going. So that flower's gonna go there. So the bunny is gonna kind of cover these random edges of the flowers and that will make it not look like the flower is floating. Keep that in mind when you're doing a layout. This new, uh, is it Whispering Willow? Is that what it's called? This new transfer is super cute. I can't believe it's taken me this long to use it. Well, they came out with so many things. I know, and you know, I gotta pace myself. And we are kind of in the middle of renovating a church. So- Kind of, huh? Our, it limits our crafting. Okay, now I've got that. Next up, bunny. I'm just trying to get 
fill up the space. Once you set it down, you're committed because there's like sticky on the back of this. So if you get the back of your transfer dirty or you move it a lot, it's not going to stick as well. I did like another faux finish on this with different coloration. <laughs> what are you actually going to do with that? I think I was going to put the copper on there, but I don't know now. I think maybe just like a dry brush of the copper over the top might be in order. And where are we headed with that? If we don't get these finished, I will share pictures in community and on in the group on the Jamie Ray Vintage group on Facebook. Oh, of course, look, there's more green paint. It's okay if it's down in my cracks. I think this needs some more flowers. So okay. I'm going to use one of the edges. Oh, there we go. Oh, goodness. Don't put that the wrong way. Sorry, guys. I normally cut this on camera, but there's green paint all over this, so I got to... She's cutting it down there. I'm cutting it down here. Off camera. Yours is turning out cool, though. What? Yours is turning out good. Thanks. All right, so I have pennies from heaven. Also DIY, basically copper patina. It's liquid patina again. So this um, one might actually be more expensive because I'm using a lot of a transfer. Keep that in mind when you're crafting if you resell. The more products you use, you need to charge for that. This is going to be interesting because there's a lot of detail. And then I might put something just in here to balance that out. So I'm just doing like a dry brush. And then I think I'm going to come back through before it dries all the way and wipe some back see if I can just get it to stick down in the bottom because I think it'll be too much of a contrast if I leave it full strength that much copper if you wanted to you could cover one of these whole things with copper that would be probably pretty awesome and then white wax and make it look like a copper tin I don't even know if I'd white wax it I might do some dark and decrepit over it or or some dark wax but I'm just brushing this because I think the whole thing I did a little bit up here I think I'm going to wipe that back off Try not to let this Monet's garden that's on the edge of my transfer <laughs> get on my pink. This is like all unlevel surface, so I'm really glad that my paint's dry or else this would be a pain in the derriere to get on here. Okay, so I wiped this all back off. You can usually play around with wet distressing your patinas for the first like 10, 15 minutes and then they just get gooey. Yeah, you gotta be careful. The built-in built top coats are a blessing and a curse and if you're not used to them, you just have to learn how to use them. If you've never used a transfer before, I suggest trying it out on a flat surface first because it is a little bit tricky on a raised surface like this. Oops. There we go. And again, there's going to be areas where it crackles because it's like not a flat surface, so it, I like that. I'm going to show you guys where I'm at now. It's a little unbalanced, so we will come with some floral on this other side here, but not all the way across because I don't want it to be too matchy-matchy. So now i got to find something else. If you've had questions and I haven't answered them, I will get to them eventually. I think I'm gonna do, they have like a matching corner. I'm just gonna cut off some of the flowers from that. All right, so I'm liking this. I'm pulling some of this wash back out of here and going back to the original white color that the tent ceiling tin was. That'd be weird to do. 
I'm talking out loud, but what if I use the whole thing again and I go like this way and we'll have a little bit of an empty spot here. Or should I just do, I'm gonna do the whole thing. Um, see if there's any questions. Where did you get the tins? My friend used them in a class for Pinner's conference and had them hanging around in her garage for like three years. And so she gave them to me. She bought them wholesale. She buys them in like the hundreds. She teaches big old classes. So that's where we're at right now. I think I'm gonna dry the center off and do, I might try this right in there. What do you think, black and white? I don't know, that would be a second use for that one. Or third or fourth. Or I don't know, the inlays you can use, the transfers you can only use once because it's somebody asked me, they're like, can you use the transfers multiple times? I'm like, well, it's stick, so then it's done. But they are eight sheets of images so it takes me a long time to finish an entire transfer i save all the pieces because i never know what i'm going to want to do with them i probably won't get my monet's garden one finished but I will finish it and share pictures. Ooh, the scissors here they are. I like the bigger parts of the image because once you get most of it down, it just kind of peels up and you don't have to work so hard at it. All right. Okay, I think we're good here. This is my tin. I'm gonna make sure that's all the way down and then I'm going to hit it with some sandpaper. Do we have any sandpaper in here? Or should I just, should I hit it with the sandpaper or should I just uh, dark wax it? What do you think, Sam? Mm, I would just dark wax it. Get your dark wax on there, see what it looks like. And then if you want, you, uh, you can come can. back probably with like a damp cloth and. I just wanna make sure it's really attached. All right. You could leave it as is, but I can't do that. Can't just leave it as I is? I can't leave it, it needs more. Do you have the dark wax over there or the black wax? No. Okay. Um, I've got to clear wax at first though, because I don't want it to be dirty looking. Just trying to fit this in here without too much overage. What? Oh yeah, you want to make sure it fits? Yeah. Oh, that's cool. I like the copper. Well, I kind of just, just like down in there. Yeah, and then I brought back the original white color that was on the tin. You're like a so I'm just doing clear wax first. It'll allow me to have more control over my dark wax. If you don't clear wax it, it can get pretty muddy. The cottage color doesn't really have to be clear waxed, but the milk paint is pretty matte. So, do you have the liquid patina out? What? Do you have the liquid patina out? No, I haven't used it today. Okay. Oh, it's looking right at me. It's looking right at you. I love it. Jamie, dark wax, no sanding. All right, well, we'll see. Ooh, this wax is, it's warm. I gotta go grab a washcloth real quick.
Okay. When I dark wax, I only do a little bit at a time and I wipe it off as I wax. And I never use a big wax brush. I'm gonna use a stencil brush today because I'm not gonna be as delicate, but big wax brushes are a pain. All right, so on mine, I have liquid patina. I'm gonna put this inlay on there. I'm doing liquid patina because I don't really wanna change the color of the middle. So if I were to do a wash or whatever, I don't know that that would hold it like the patina would. But we've done several of these uh, paint inlays with patina, so we know it works good. So make sure you put it on the right direction. Yeah, I know, I know. I, I say that and then I'm, I've done it like four times. This is, I think, second or maybe even third use for this. So we'll see. It might go on fairly faint. If you don't like think that it's too dark, you just use clear wax almost like an eraser. Yeah, I don't think I'm going to need to distress it. Whoever commented Actually. that is right. But the dark, I'm using dark wax. You can use black too. The dark wax and the black wax take it from bar, Barbie bubblegum pink to a little bit more shabby sophistication. All right. So I was going to patina the back of this, but I yeah. think in order to not decoupage it, I'm just going to get it wet. Patina the back of it? You mean put patina over the top of the paper? Yeah. You're not supposed to do that. Well, you're supposed to get it wet again. Yeah, that's but not I'm with doing. patina. I know. That's why I almost messed up. I'm, I'm oh. telling them. Oh, I thought that's what you thought you were really supposed to do. I'm like, no. no you, so you put your your paint or your patina down, then you put your transfer, your uh, your inlay down, different than a transfer. Basically, and then you get the back wet, and then you dry the whole thing out, and then you get it wet again and pull it off. I'm just going to use clear wax to kind of smear it and clean up my pink a little so it's not so dirty. Basically, when you're using the inlays, you basically think the name inlay means you have to inlay it into something. So it either has to go into paint or like liquid patina. And then the paint that's on the inlay fuses to... Oh, we got black piece. bars on the side. We've How long have we been like that? Now. Yeah, it's been all a... right, guys. I'm going to show this to you up close because it is good. Hey, don't go ending it though. I'm going to finish mine. I'm not going to end it. If I didn't put this dark wax on, you would definitely not be able to see the um, crackle that's on here, and you would miss all that detail. Again, I'm using the clear wax brush to kind of come back and pull it up. And I didn't go as heavy with the dark wax in the middle because I kind of wanted it to the transfer to pop. All right. Get it wet again. I'm just using a damp cloth. Okay. You can pat or whatever you want to do. I feel like the paper lasts longer if you pat it. But Sometimes this one's I on get its last leg. When I'm when I'm really working on a piece, it's like a workout and- Okay, a... yours turned out good. Thanks. All right, let's, let's get a close up. So you can see the detail on this. I'm kind of in love. So, you know, when we were talking about pricing, I was like, oh, maybe like 50. This is probably going to be somewhere around $69.95 because I use so much transfer. And I want to make sure that I'm including that in the price. Maybe even 74. I need to calculate it all. But anyways, turned out pretty great. How's yours coming? It's coming pretty good. I'm going to go check my Monet's garden one. Yeah. What are you going to finish up with that? I'm not probably going to finish it on the live. But because I really like the clay to dry before I start messing with it. So I went and got this more wet. It wasn't transferring. It could be because it's like its third use or fourth. I don't I don't even know um, how many times. it's. So if I used. let this sit a couple hours, the clay will dry more and then I'll be able to manipulate it. All right. So that didn't transfer very well. 
because it's too many uses. I feel like that's good. You got like an aged situation there. I don't know. Here's you can't even one. tell what it is. This one has to dry. I think you can tell what it is. It's black twall, clearly. I don't know. Maybe do it again. Well, I'm going to do a different one. Off camera. Off camera? Well, I think, third, are oh. you going to do it? It's like 11, 12, I guess. It's fine. We're good. We got to we gotta show them some finished stuff. You got to show them. Mine's finished. It is like 4,000 degrees outside. It's been running the heat gun. All right. It's also hot outside. That would look good in a nursery girl's room. I actually think it would look good just about anywhere, but definitely in a little girl's room, that would be darling. That's the whispering willow transfer. There's still like a hedgehog on here. Is that a skunk? There's a bunch of birds. There's a bunch of strawberries too. I have to figure out it's how I want to use the strawberries. It needs more wet stuff on the tin. I think it was just like the third use of that inlay. No, it was, it, was, it might have even been its fourth use. <laughs> it's hard to say. I think I'm just going to do this. Okay, I'm going to move this over though. I guess I will work on my piece. I got some fun distressing. Like, still have wet paint on mine though. How do you calculate price skiing? So uh, Denise, I calculate off of what I would charge for a basic paint finish. And then I add on to it what extra time and product I use. And some of it's just my like expertise because whereas that probably took me half an hour to complete on a live video, that's just because I've done a lot of projects. So you, it's not always indicative of exactly how much time it takes you because some of that's just hours and hours of practice so you have to keep that into mind too and also market value i mean just because somebody takes something takes you 50 hours doesn't mean that people are going to pay you thousands of dollars like especially when you're first starting you just don't make as much money per hour because you're learning you know you're like an apprentice i don't know if i'm going to do anything because i really want that paint to dry Brewer says, I like the Monet's garden. Thank you. I like it too. I, I'm going to do like a white over it. I could do a white dry brush and then let it dry and then come in with some soft pink dry brush on the flowers. What kind of clay is on that green clint? So I used um, Iron Orchid Designs Air Dry Clay. We sell that at jamierayvintage.com. And I used the Roses Mold. And it will like crack and get all aged and look awesome. And there's blue pooching out the side. So it's kind of crackling my paint a little. I'm just making my pattern line up a little bit. All right, right side down. Monet's garden is a really pretty rich green. It's not like the um, 1995 forest green. It's like a little bit different, which I like. Because this white or is this patina? That's patina. Okay. What brush did you use the white on? Um, I don't know. I've been washing my brushes. Okay. Think about dry brushes. Your brush cannot be like sopping wet, so this might not work. What color green? Um, this is Monet's garden. We've had some hanging out in a squeeze bottle since a Christmas craft project like three years ago because I do use it quite a bit for Christmas projects. So now I'm just really making sure that this is down and it's pushed into that liquid patina really well. And then this is a damp cloth, so I'm also wetting the back. And what you don't see a lot of times when we're not on camera anymore, we touch up all of our pieces. It's sometimes hard to create on camera, I'm not gonna lie. 
<laughs> Sometimes I have performance anxiety. Like I can't, I can't do it. I'm even worse in person. I start stressing out, sweating. All right, I'm gonna see if I can get this dry enough to do a dry brush. Do you have sell a red paint? Yes, um, we have Marquee and Carnival Red. If you want more of a blue toned red, go with Marquee. And if you want an orange toned red, then go with Carnival Red. Those are in a DIY paint. We also carry um, Scarlet is a milk paint red color and Red Wagon, I think. Red Wagon is, looks red like a wagon. red barn. It's pretty good. Do you only use the wax over the transfers? Is it okay to seal? Oh, you can seal. You always want to do like a water-based sealer, something not harsh, and you want it to be very dry underneath before you seal it. If you use something that's like smelly and not all natural, it can and probably will curl. I won't mention product names because I don't like to throw products under the bus, but there's a lot of sealers out there that are water-based and they're like, oh, they're you know, they're water-based, they're good for the environment, but they're not all natural. You can smell it and it can make them curl. So keep that in mind. All right, I think my brush is pretty dry. The brush is at all wet, just this does not work. Okay. I'm gonna get most of the paint off and then I'm just gonna come dry brush it. All right, so the steps on the inlay, this is a brand new one, so fingers crossed that this works out in the liquid patina. Um, you put your, your transfer, your paint, or your liquid patina down, and then you put the inlay on top of that, then get it, push it down, get it wet on the back, let it dry out, then you get it wet again, and then you pull it off. Yep, that's a much better transfer on this fresh one. So people ask me like, why a white dry brush as opposed to a white wax? A white dry brush will not change the color underneath. It lays on top. A white wax will change the color of the base color. Does that make sense? So it's just a different look. And the other thing that's nice about a white dry brush is I can totally seal this with a liquid top coat. Whereas if it was a wax, you couldn't because it's a resist or you shouldn't, I guess you should say. I have done it before, but you shouldn't uh, seal with a liquid top coat. And I will show you guys this up close. All right, look at how much better that came out. You can actually see that it's something. It's like a little hut in the tree. And then I added this swoopy down here to kind of fill in the bottom. Okay, I'm going to, where's the spray sealer, the water slash big top mixture? Oh, just set it? Yeah. It's in there somewhere, but I'm not promising that that's gonna work because you're supposed to rinse it out and not leave it in there. Careful not to get it on my piece. Oh, like you spritzed my computer? You're, yes, remember when I spritzed your computer? I'm doing this so that way <laughs> hopefully it doesn't get sprayed. So I don't want like speckles on this. All right. And I will have to come in here when we're not live once it's all the oh, way wow. dry. Oh, and... wow. It's just poking out the top. It's because this <laughs> nozzle got gummed up. I told you you're supposed to when you, so you have to set them with half big top and half water or like half. There we go. I got it all ungummed. And you we'll should see. empty your sprayer and clean it out with water in between. Disclaimer. Do I do that? No. Okay, I'm going to dry this because I want to do one more wash over the top of this. And then I think we'll be done and we'll let you guys get on with your Wednesday. Get about your day. So this technique that I'm doing here with a dry brush, this works with any contrasting color. So you could put like a darker color underneath. I love to do it with a gray and a white. You get like a cement look. And you just, your brush has to be so, so dry. If you've never done it before, like test it out on something other than your piece that you're working on because it definitely does take a little bit of getting used to. And I like to dry brush multiple directions instead of always the same direction.
All right, so we've used a ton, a ton of things. If you guys want to try out some of these products, we've had great results with all of them. We've used them hundreds, if not thousands of times. Um, you can find them at jamierayvintage.com. All right, guys. Um, I think this looks all right. It's a little splotchy. And what I like to do is I step back and I'm like, okay, I need a little dry brush here, a little dry brush there, and I even it out. And then I might... I was thinking about adding pink, but I think I'm probably just going to clear wax this and then dark wax a little bit of the details and um, move on. So here we go. And then I'll show my other one just in case somebody, you want to show your last one. This is my other tile. This is like a really fun way to play with paint techniques. So. Monet's Garden and White Swan. Again, this does not have any sealer on it, so you do have to seal it with something. In my case, I'm going to use clear wax, and that'll seal it and be fine. And I have no idea how many different paint colors he's <laughs> used on his. Mostly just white and little black dress and some dark and decrepit to brown up the, the washes. You're having too much fun over there. So I just went and I washed out my brush because it was too dark, and now this is like just water on my brush thinning out what I already had on here. Well, I think it looks awesome. All right, I guys. May, hold on real quick. Oh, sorry. I, I may come to... back through and just hit these lighter spots again, like wipe this off and bring them back. If you guys want to buy the pain products you saw here used today, go to jamierayvintage.com. And if you like this video, please hit that share button. Give it a thumbs up and subscribe to Jane Ray Vintage for more. DIY. Was I getting stuff on your thing? I, there was intent to splatter. There was no intent to splatter. Here, let me show Love you guys. mine real quick. Have a great week. We'll see you live Saturday and we'll have another video out Friday.